If you haven't yet done so, please pause the video and try to answer the question on your own before listening on. In order to understand the solution to this question, we want to look at the graph and note that there are three distinct values for the electric flux. We have a constant electric flux right here, which we can color in red. We have a second value for the electric flux, which we'll go ahead and color in blue. And then we have that third value of the electric flux, which we'll go ahead and color in orange. And we'll notice that those three electric fluxes are located at different values for R. And we can see that for small values of R, the electric flux takes on the, the value that we've colored in red. Now if we come over to this diagram and think about what a small value of R would mean, it would correspond to a spherical Gaussian surface whose radius is very small, maybe something like this. And we'll notice that that Gaussian surface encloses only this central charge right here. For the value of electric flux that we've colored in blue, we can see that that's an intermediate value for the radius. It's not the smallest, but nor is it the largest. So in this diagram, that would correspond to a spherical Gaussian surface whose radius was an intermediate value. So we can draw that Gaussian surface and we'll note that it encloses both the first concentric shell as well as the central charge. Finally, we have the electric flux that we colored in orange and that is for very large values of the radius. So in this diagram, that would correspond to a Gaussian surface that encloses the entire structure here. Now for part A, in order to determine the charge of the central particle, we're going to use Gauss's law, and we're going to choose the Gaussian surface that only encloses that central charge. And so let's write out Gauss's law. And according to that law, we have a constant multiplied by the electric flux equaling the amount of charge enclosed in our Gaussian surface. Now again, we're choosing the Gaussian surface to be surrounding only that central charged particle. And this is going to allow us to calculate that charge. So all we have to do is plug in the electric flux that we can read off the graph here. And according to the scale, since this is one, this would be two times 10 to the fifth for the electric flux. So we'll go ahead and plug in. And for the sake of clarity, we have omitted the units. Notice that the value for the constant epsilon is given as 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. So if we multiply these out, we get roughly 1.8 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs for the amount of charge enclosed in our Gaussian surface. And since our Gaussian surface only encloses that charged particle, this must be the value for the charge of that particle. So this is the correct answer to part A. We'll keep that value off on the side and we've labeled it Q central. Now to solve part B, we're going to look at a different Gaussian surface. We're going to look at the one that we colored in blue. And the reason is that that Gaussian surface encloses not only the central charge, but also the shell that's marked A right here. So looking at that blue Gaussian surface, we could apply Gauss's law once again. In this case, the electric flux, if we read the graph here, is negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four times 10 to the fifth. And if we multiply this out, we get approximately negative 3.54 times 10 to the minus sixth coulombs for the enclosed charge. Now, going back and looking at the diagram, remember that this blue Gaussian surface that we drew encloses not only shell A, but also the central charge. So really, this charge right here is comprised of both of those structures. And therefore, we would have to write that that enclosed charge is going to equal the charge on shell A plus the central charge. Now, of course, we determined the central charge to be 1.8 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs, so we'll plug that value in right here. And then we can simply subtract that value over to the left-hand side to solve for the amount of charge on shell A. And when we do that, we get approximately negative 5.3 times 10 to the minus 6 for the amount of charge on shell A. So this is the correct answer to part B. And finally, we can figure out the charge on shell B by looking at the Gaussian surface that we colored in orange because that Gaussian surface encloses shell B along with shell A and the central particle. And so we'll write Gauss's law one more time. And we can see that the electric flux for the orange colored Gaussian surface is up there at one, two, 
3, 4, 5, 6 times 10 to the fifth. When we multiply this out, we get 5.31 times 10 to the minus sixth coulombs for the amount of charge enclosed in the orange colored Gaussian surface. And of course, that orange colored Gaussian surface is made up of the charge on shell B plus the charge on shell A and then plus the charge on that central particle. We'll just call it QC right now. So why don't we go ahead and plug in the value for the QC as well as for QA into our equation over here. We can combine these two like terms on the right hand side. And then we'll add this 3.5 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs over to the other side and we get approximately 8.8 .8 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs for the amount of charge on shell B. And this is the correct answer to part C.